Today I'm going to tell you about the 10 things you need to know about this week in OU Sooner Sports and all that's coming up after the bumper. Bumper! What do you mean you don't subscribe to my son's YouTube channel? Mama, no! Just snap the damn ball, RJ! Today we're going to talk about the 10 things you need to know from this week in Sooner Sports. I'm also going to tell you about how you can pre-order my book coming out October 23rd of this year. It's called Let It Bang. It's about my journey from gun noob to becoming an NRA pistol instructor. There's a link in the description below if you want to know more about it. Also create a new website called RJ Young Writes where you can read more about it. Now, on to sports. So the first thing you need to know is Trey Young did not win Big 12 Player of the Year. That honor went to Kansas guard Devontae Graham. Devontae Graham is the best player on the best team in the Big 12 Conference. Trey Young is the best player in the country. Now, what is most stark about all of this is Devontae Graham was the unanimous pick for Big 12 Player of the Year. Now, while both players made the all Big 12 first team and Trey Young made the newcomer team, there are a lot of things that kind of strike me about that announcement, which means if he's the unanimous pick, didn't Lon Kruger not vote for Trey Young? Didn't he vote for Devontae Graham? And why? So I'd like an answer for that. Number two is, it's called Big 12 Player of the Year. It's not called Big 12 Player of the Best Team on the Best Conference of the Year. Now, everybody knows that Kansas ended up being the best team in a very, very deep conference. And OU was the number nine seed of a 10-team league going into the Big 12 tournament. But one of the things that strikes me about the Big 12 awards list is that Trey Young is the only Sooner on it, which means he carried this team. Now, yes, I know they went 1-7 and seven for the month of February, which is terrible, which is trash, which is garbage. But also bear in mind, Trey Young is a gift. We weren't supposed to get him. He was supposed to be at Kansas. He was supposed to be at Kentucky. He was supposed to be at Duke. And now we have a live experiment for what it's like to have the best player in the country on a bad team. And what it comes down to is you don't win 20 games in the regular season, and it remains to be seen how you perform in the postseason. But basketball is still a team sport, and you still need players who are absolutely capable, like, say, Azabuki at Kansas, who can help out a Devontae Graham, just like a Svi Mikulik. Devontae Graham averaged 17.6 points per game, 7 assists a game. Trey Young averaged 28 and 9. What's going to be interesting to me is if Trey Young gets skunked on the Player of the Year honors, because if you can't win Big 12 Player of the Year, the likelihood of you being awarded the best player in the entire nation it's got to go down, right? At least that's what I would expect to hear. So Trey Young has gone from being a shoe-in to be the National Player of the Year to now we're asking questions because he can't even win Conference Player of the Year in his own conference. So some of this I want to put on the Big 12, which, by the way, did not award Lincoln Riley Coach of the Year when all he did was win the conference, take his team to the Rose Bowl, the college football playoff, in his first year on the job. So the Big 12 does not have a great track record of picking winners. I'd even venture to say that it's biased toward the Sooners in all sports because we're that good. But the facts are the facts. OU was not a good basketball team in the month of February, and that hurt Trey Young deeply for his chances to win Player of the Year. All right, the second thing you need to know, if you haven't heard by now, Orlando Brown turned in what many people call a slow 40, 5.86, and what many people have called a bad performance on bench press where he only put up 14 reps. But there's plenty of tape out there for the unanimous All-American at left tackle for the 6'7", 345-pound behemoth who's always out there just looking for whom he may destroy to say, I want that guy on my team. Now, the criticism about the Underwear Olympics is that it's not football. We have lots of stories about guys who are workout warriors, about guys who've absolutely crushed the combine, who can't play football. So if you want a football player, go get Orlando Brown. If you want an Underwear Olympian, go get some other dude like that other offensive lineman who ran 4840. I don't even know his name. I just know he ran a 4840. And when the time comes when offensive linemen have to run 40-yard dashes in under 5 seconds, then yeah, I'm probably going to give that guy a look. But as long as playing offensive line means having a quick two first steps and being able to destroy the man in front of you, I'm going to go with Orlando Brown. Now, 4-8 is a number you're going to hear a lot now because that is the 40-yard dash time that Baker Mayfield ran. Baker Mayfield was at the Combine, and because Baker Mayfield is at the Combine, the word polarized got thrown around. He went through interviews, and he gave what I believe was the most honest interview of the entire combine. I'm going to put a link to a video I made earlier this weekend about what I think of the questions that he was asked and the answers that he gave in his interview. I encourage you to watch that, give you a little bit of background. But he threw the ball well. He showed all the traits that we have known, that we have seen. His feet are learning to settle. He's still accurate as all get out with a football. Nothing changed on that front. But now NFL media is getting their first dates of Baker Mayfield 
and they don't know what to do with it. The fourth thing you need to know is also Baker Mayfield related in that the Cleveland Browns seem to be sniffing around Baker Mayfield now. Now everybody who follows the draft knows that Cleveland has the number one overall pick and the number four overall pick. So it's not as if it's out of the question for them to draft a Baker Mayfield at either one of those spots. Now if you've been following this channel and many of you have, you know that Denver has its eye on Baker Mayfield and has for the last three months. So if he can drop to them, I think they take him in the draft. But now we really have to worry about Cleveland going to get Baker Mayfield, especially since Baker Mayfield had said, if anybody can turn that franchise around, it's me. Which is exactly what I would expect him to say. But please don't draft him, Cleveland. Please. I even saw a picture on Twitter of somebody who had duct taped over Johnny Manziel's jersey name with Mayfield, and I didn't like it. Shout out to OU Kingpin. That's where I saw that. I just thought about that. The fifth thing you need to know is that the Big 12 basketball tournament starts up on Wednesday, and it's going to be a Bedlam rematch. The number eight seed, Oklahoma State, will play the number nine seed, Oklahoma. that be us. Now, I know a lot of people are going to say that there was a four-way tie for sixth place, but it doesn't matter. The seeds are the seeds. And the fact is, the Big 12 couldn't have hoped for a better 8-9 matchup because we have split the series this year with a win against Oklahoma State and a loss against Oklahoma State. Plus, we get to see, at the very least, a contender for National Player of the Year in Trey Young go up against the second most hated team in all of OU sports in Oklahoma State who is playing well and playing very good basketball. So look out for that game which will be at 6 o'clock in Kansas City at the Sprint Center on that Wednesday. The seventh thing you need to know is that 2019 defensive tackle Derek Green decommitted from the Sooners earlier this week. I'll link to a video where I talk more about that above, but you should know that he was the only defensive tackle that we had committed to this class, and he took us from two committed defensive lineman down to one. He reopened his commitment. The Sooners have already dropped in recruiting rankings on both Rivals and 24-7. I know it's just March, but these are also things you want to keep in mind as we move into spring practice when recruiting is really going to start picking up again because of the accelerated schedule of the early signing period. So with the spring game coming on April 14th and quite the list already of prep players who have said they are going to go to the spring game for their official visit, for their unofficial visits, I expect to hear about some commitments around that weekend or just following it. This is something to keep in mind because one of the things that you know that I know as an OU fan that we want more of are defensive tackles in particular. We want dominant defensive tackles and Derek Green seemed to have those tools. Again, he pulled out for reasons which I've talked about already and I encourage you to go look at that video, but you should know that heading into this week. Speaking of visitors who will come to the spring game, four-star safety Jamal Morris has said he will be in attendance. LSU currently stands as the favorite to win his services, but with 19 offers and an official visit on the schedule for OU, you have to like their chances. Again, the spring game is taking on way more importance than it ever has because of the early signing period, so I expect to hear about the coaching staff rolling out the red carpet for a kid that can absolutely play in this defensive backfield if he decides to come to OU, because that ended weird. You should also know about our commit list. As of right now, the 2019 class has all of five commits on it. Those are quarterback Spencer Radler, who just won a state championship last week while wearing OU on his socks. Congrats to you, Spencer. Really excited about getting this kid who can play football and basketball. The boy can throw the ball, catch the ball, kick the extra point. Four-star tight end to Austin Stogner is also on the list as well as four-star wideout Trajan Bridges, four-star running back Isaiah Spiller, and three-star defensive end Corey Roberson. And finally, the thing that you need to know is about the top uncommitted targets for OU. At the top of the list is Dax Hill out of Booker T. Washington. Shout out to the Hornets, much pride there, who is the top safety in the country. We lost out on Justice Hill, went to Oklahoma State, has turned into an outstanding running back up there. And I am tired of losing out on so much talent out of Booker T. Washington. Yes, I know we got Dom Alexander, but I want more. I want to put a fence around Booker T. and Millwood in particular. There is no reason why we shouldn't be able to go and get these kids. I want more effort there. Go get them. They're there. The next one is five-star tackle Kenyon Green. Bill Beanbow has been doing a phenomenal job of securing outstanding offensive line talent. And with what Orlando Brown has turned into after being just a three-star prospect with bad footwork and bad hands, you got to believe that this run of tackles and linemen from OU have ended up in the NFL. It's got to be getting Green's attention. I like it. Also, is four-star wide receiver Theo Weiss 
who was once committed to OU and could be committed again. He's planning to come up for the spring game. I've watched his tape. I love his tape. The kid is absolutely electric. Rounding out that list is four-star recruit and corner Eric Young. No relation. At six foot one, 195 pounds, he is a big corner, and that kind of size does not go unnoticed, and his offer list is blowing up. He took an unofficial visit to Oklahoma in February. He plans to take an official for the spring game. I expect the Sooners to try to lock him up then. All right, another edition of the Woosaw Podcast is going to come out later this week. Be on the lookout for that. Also, you can pre-order my book, Let It Bang, on Amazon. I'm really excited about it. This is one of those things that I've been working toward for the last 10 years of my life. I love to tell stories. It's why I created another channel for storytelling called RJ Tell Stories. Check that out. All right, that's it for me. If you like the videos, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow. Deuces. <laughs>